Hi, everyone. Welcome to Fresh from the Studio, uh, Women in the Works program, where we invite uh, our member artists to share what they're working on now with you. We have um, three artists with us today, Virginia Jackson Carr, Lauren Tarbell, and Zulma Vega. Two of the artists are based in Austin and one's based in Houston, but is in um, Columbia. So we're excited to hear what each artist has to show us. Um, the presentations will be 10 minutes and then we'll follow up at the end with your questions. So feel free to type in the chat any comments and questions that you have and we'll address them all at the end. We're gonna get started today with Zulma. Great. Let me just share my screen. I'm going to try again because for some reason it says there is an issue with the sharing. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Olma Vega. And as Diane mentioned, I'm right now in Bogota, Colombia. Uh, I live in Houston, but I'm, I'm a visual artist uh, from this country. Uh, thank you so much, Diane and Sophia and all the staff of Women and Their Work for inviting us and for everyone who is listening here today. I invite you to follow me to get to know more about my work and also follow an organization that I'm a founding member of called LAWA. And this is Latin American Women Artists of Houston. Today, I'll talk to you a bit about my story as an artist. I will go fast in the first slides while I'll tell you about my transition from painting to sculpture, my studio practice, and I show you some of my latest work. I studied painting and sculpture at the Glacelle School of Art. Uh, and to them and the amazing teachers, instructors, and mentors, I owe them my second career in life. My inspiration comes from human behavior. Uh, I am very much intrigued with the things we do, our reactions to life, our perseverance, um, and our resilience. Initially, my studio practice consisted in painting, as you can see here oil, acrylic painting, and mixed media on canvas. And I was very inclined to do figurative work. The paintings, however, they started asking me for more, more layers, more material, more texture. And it was then that I introduced new studies and materials in my practice, ceramics, woods, uh, sorry, wood, plastics, uh, metal, among other things. And then when this happened, I started transforming what I was literally representing on my paintings and went from figurative to abstract by repeating a form that you can see here in the slide that to me symbolizes a face on which I could add layers, drawing, paint, material. And this became the anchor that allowed me to develop uh, new ideas and a body of work that I called layers. This is the first series where I developed not only objects, uh, but continued with painting, adding resin and thread on the surface. The day, the first day I entered the wood and the metal shop, I was extremely intimidated by the machinery and the materials. I just thought it was too big for me. But then I just had this feeling of empowerment. It was bigger than me. It was during the work of this series that the paintings erupted the, the picture plane and my work became very sculptural. Artwork that could allow me to use more than my hands, my body. A sculpture became very important and part of my work and so much that today I am happy uh, a candidate of the MFA program in sculpture from the University of Houston and planning on graduating in 2024. As with painting in sculpture, I was intrigued with transparencies as you can see here. Uh, movement, layers, I started incorporating materials that could allow me to see through, uh, here resin, plexiglass as well entered my practice. I started combining materials that were physically opposite to each other uh, as a way to relate to relationships or even the relationship we have with our own self. In this case, here you see a combination of jute, a natural fiber with wood, an added resin, a man-made synthetic one, 
opposites, a translucent with a not translucent material. This copter is, ice, is called iceberg. We can only see a small part of others as well as of ourselves. Just a face, just a hint of what we truly are. It is with this copter that I started to think much more about my home country, Colombia, and my upbringing. And the natural fiber connects me to my roots, and I see clearly the increase of this type of material in my future work. I was fortunate enough to show part of this series at the Boucher Gallery in Houston in the Glassell School of Art late uh, last year. And while I worked on this series, I also worked uh, on the one called Masks. This series explores the past and the present, visually inspired by Colombian indigenous masks, and a concept in uh, psychology called masking, a way to change our natural personality to conform to social pressures or insecurities. And I invite you to go to my website because there are many more of these uh, small sculptures as well as the installation that I showed during an exhibit. With the thought of combining um, organic with non-organic, I started working with branches from trees that had some meaning to me, um, perhaps uh, a way to immortalize them. And in this case, a neighbor's tree that was cut to make space for a new construction, and this combined with plexiglass. I explore the meaning of balance, uh, balance in our, in our own life, experimenting what I was going through. Uh, being a grad student, a mother, a teacher, a wife, and I started asking myself, does everything have the same value? Is it really about balancing? And how could materials put together symbolize our existence or relate to our own life? This is a sculpture from that series called Embrace It. And I have been always interested in allowing my work to interact with the viewer even further. Engage not only visually, but with their other senses as well. Here, I asked people to physically balance the plexiglass objects, uh, objects sorry, on a bigger structure. And then going back to that question, is it really about balancing? I realized it was not about achieving equilibrium. It was about not letting any, anything fall. And so I started to experiment what, with materials that would seem to be just doing that. Transformed resin, held by a plastic cup, placed on a wall, almost reaching the surface of the floor, but not quite. Plaster thrown to the surface, in this case wood, and then let gravity do its own work. I added thread as a way to drive the plaster to do what I wanted to convey. And then I changed the surface from wood to metal, uh, in this case, metal mesh, to incorporate even more var variables, movement, a little bit of tension, as you can see here. I work with many materials. Uh, I like to experiment and even though balancing is still a series I plan to go back to, as an artist, I feel the need to move to new things and keep on experimenting. In the process, I usually work in a piece that becomes a transition to the next phase. And this one is a, a case of that, the sculpture called uh, Sculpture for the Artist, Recycle Thoughts, came about after an incident in our, in our studios um, earlier this year that forced us to leave the building for about two weeks. And without materials and infrastructure, I turned into one uh, that was acceptable and convenient, in this case, plastic, recycled plastic. Transparencies intrigued me as well as layering, and I found on, in this material an option to plexiglass. This sculpture asks me to look within. I sit on the object placed on the floor. I close my eyes and let the thoughts come as they wish. Usually the negative thoughts are the ones that repeat themselves. Um, and I invite myself to recycle them and use them productively. This next sculpture is called Human, also inviting viewer, viewer to interact in this case. I read from uh, psychologists that to be human is equivalent to enduring pain. And I invite the viewer to think about what is happening here. Pain is not necessarily negative. Uh, I believe pain allows us to grow, to become stronger. The scars remain as they remain on this object as a history of the surface, something new to transform. To invite us to ask not why is this happening to me, but what for is this happening to me? And then here I share with you a video showing the interaction with the piece. 
uh, by my dear artist and friend, Laura de Leon, exhibited at the University of Houston. Another series of work I'm developing um, right now is called Diversity. And when thinking about home country, my upbringing and the experiences I'm going through now, it pushes me to think about my own identity, but also the experience many immigrants go through when moving out of their country. This sculpture called Study of Diversity Chair, a bit uncanny, described by some as an alien, is in a study for an actual chair to be placed publicly outdoor, where people can sit and balance themselves out inviting us to think about the diversity ratio, specifically between university faculty in our school versus student body. An alien, which is what you are referred to when you migrate to the US, changing your name to an alien number to those fortunate ones that start the process of the legal residency in this country. The second sculpture is called Diversity Challenge. And in this case, I placed it on a hall in the University of Houston with all objects within balancing each other out. Instructors belonging to the school, I invite the viewer to feel at ease, perhaps uncomfortable of going under or passing by. And as a fellow artist friend called it, it's the elephant in the room. Uh, finally, uh, because I'm not currently in my studio and cannot show it to you live, I want to share some images from it and how it looks at the moment, as well as share you some of my upcoming shows. So the first one is in August, uh, curated and juried by Gabriela Magana with students of the MFA program. Then in September, the result of a residency experience uh, I had in Marfa, Texas in late May, where my fellow artists and uh, with the curation and lead of Professor Abina Di Mesa will have an exhibit that engages the invisible phenomena of the desert and conversations about the land and its complexity. And then my solo show at Elgin Street Studios at the New University of Houston in April of next year. I want to thank you, everyone who's here. I hope you follow me and get to know more about me and my work uh, by going to my website and reaching out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Next up is Lauren Tarbell. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm going to share our screen. I just want to take this opportunity to thank women in their work and my fellow artists for this incredible opportunity. Thank you all, all our viewers for being here. All right. So, looking good, guys. Can everybody see the screen? Yes. Awesome. So I just want to uh, make an introduction. Um, this is, here I am. This is me. Uh, I grew up here in Texas. I was born in Dallas and I got to Austin as soon as I could, as they say. Uh, I'm really lucky in that I've always known in my heart that I'm an artist. I've always known that this is what I was meant to do. Um, I went to an arts magnet school in Dallas called Booker T. Washington and had a lot of early exposure to all forms of art and studied with some really amazing teachers. Uh, later, I went to the University of Texas and explored a lot of new ways of making art and fell in love with photography. Um, my natural inclination is I'm a painter, but something about the magic of photography fully captivated me. And I turned all my attention to photography in college. I moved to New York in 2012 to work as a fine artist, a photographer. And then as fate had it, my Texas roots brought me back. Uh, and I relocated back to Austin, where I have fully embraced my career as a fine artist and really began focusing on my heart's calling, which is painting and fine art. And so I want to talk about why, why I make art. What, what is my motivation? Um, when I make art, I'm listening to my inner calling. It's an effort for me to understand the world. The pieces that I make are an invitation to pause, reflect, and connect the sense of wonder. Uh, I, I really want to challenge conformity and invite people to think about the world that we live in. 
I also believe in making art for the sake of beauty. Uh, the world is a very crazy, wild place. And I think that even the ugliest things can be made beautiful. I also believe uh, in advocating. I think a lot of my work is, is now leaning towards advocacy for women's rights and social issues, which you'll see later in the presentation. So I am motivated and fascinated by nature, the universe, mysticism, belief, and consciousness. Uh, this piece behind me is a large mandala piece. And I want to, this is important for me to own uh, my gifts. So I'm an artist, but I'm also a highly intuitive individual. I'm empathic and I'm a bit psychic. Um, I'm captivated by psychology and belief. And it took me a long time to embrace my inner witch, but I am really feeling confident in that as I move forward with my work, because my work is very connected to this notion of uh, there's more than we can see in the world. I think it's important to be brave, to be true to yourself and to speak from your heart. So some of the current projects I'm working on include uh, aspects of collage, painting, photography, and I've also recently started working as an illustrator. So I wanna talk about my work as an illustrator. Uh, I published my first children's book last year. It was a whirlwind project um, and it was very heartfelt. I was working with the author Ruth Petrus and it was her final book. Uh, as she navigated the final stages of cancer. She asked me to illustrate the book in December of 2020, and I began working on this uh, in New Year's Day 2021 uh, and completed all the illustrations in April. So in four months, I taught myself how to illustrate a children's book, and it was a, it was a really amazing process but difficult because I was working with someone I loved and this person was getting ready to transition from this life to whatever lays beyond and waits for us. So um, as, as I worked on the book, uh, there was no guideline. How do you work with someone who is dying and, and leave, trying to leave this legacy? Uh, and, and so my, my spirituality and my ability to be candid and direct uh, really came in handy. It, it was very useful. And, and I literally, uh, on Ruth's deathbed in April, she called me and said, where is the last illustration? And I shared that with her. And I uh, think that when she passed, there was a lot of peace because we had accomplished this, this major project together. So I'm going to share a few of the images that I really enjoy from the book. Um, I think this one's noteworthy because in the, the book, she's, she was not religious, but there was a sense of spirituality. And uh, in the book, the grandfather who's passed is referenced as a spirit in this black and white rendition of, of the figure of grandfather, always watching over the little boy, Toby. Um, because life is wild and, and overlaps. A lot was going on in 2021, as I'm sure you remember, um, the January 6th and storming of the Capitol and the winter storm in Texas. And I'm working with Ruth, who's, who's sick. Um, I lost my cat. He was struck and killed by a car during this, this time. And so he worked his way into the book. His name was Bowie. Um, and here we have mother and Toby walking down a path. There's a lot about this the cycle of life. Um, I think this illustration is particularly beautiful. The progression of the caterpillar from the egg to the butterfly. Metamorphosis is a very uh, important theme in my work. And I am currently writing and illustrating my very first children's book, Solo. It's based on a true story told to me by my belated mother-in-law, Karen McGurr, who coincidentally passed away last year, uh, the day before the book was published. Ruth was her sister. So I'm excited to be 
uh, carrying this story forward that she shared with me. So now I wanna dive into my work, sorry, I'm gonna backtrack, into collage. Uh, in my collage work, I explore the divine feminine and my, my sense of wonder and mysticism. I find that collage is a really amazing medium to do just that. Uh, I love layering imagery and I come from a family of collectors. And so I hold on to all these scraps of paper and I'm constantly looking for that, that little precious piece of paper that, or, or pressed flowers or discarded materials that will work their way into my collages. I first began the collages right after my graduation from the University of Texas. And I had been spending all my time in the dark room, uh, out in the world phot photographing and then in the dark room. So when I graduated, I, I was like, okay, how do I keep making my work? And I immediately went back to my roots. I started painting and started incorporating collage in, into my pieces. And these next few pieces are the very first pieces I did in the series. All of these pieces are, are rather small and intimate. Um, I think the largest collage I've created is 18 by 24, but most of them are, are like eight by 10. I love this piece uh, in particular, and I'm, I'm doing a whole series based on this one piece. I love that we can take one image or one object and place it within a composition uh, with mixed media and it becomes this, this really powerful statement. It's one of the things I, I love the most about collage. Um, this and the next piece were created 15 years apart. This is the most recent, uh, done in 2019. It's called Cathedral Tunes in Red and Blue. And I think it kind of hints at what we're gonna see in my paintings. Uh, these pieces are very much about kind of looking through the veil and into this other kind of dimension or place where we can just reflect. I think each time we look at an image like this, we find something new. And I really enjoy that about these two pieces. So this one was done recently. And this one I did, I believe, uh, date is wrong, but uh, I did this one, I think, in 2008. So I like the juxtaposition that as an artist, you can make something long, long ago and then make something contemporary that speaks to your old work and continues the thread. And as you look at these, I know you, you'll notice perhaps a lot of uh, feminine references. I started to notice that I was really exploring, exploring these, the idea of, of the goddess or the divine feminine, um, which I think we need more of in our culture. Thank you women in their work. <laughs> and these are some of my more recent pieces. I want to go ahead and uh, this is one of my very favorite quotes. I'm gonna transition into talking about my paintings. This is a quote by Martha Graham, and I won't read the whole thing, but she's writing to her friend, Agnes DeMille, and she talks about how we all have a life force that is unique to ourselves. And if we block it, the world won't have it. She talks about how important it is to keep the channel open. And every time I read this, every time I see this, uh, I get the chills and I, I just feel so inspired. So in, in the spirit of keeping the channel open and embracing that inner witch, I have, in 2018, I started a series of paintings called Opening Portals. Uh, I kind of happened into it. I started, this is the very first painting in the series. It's called Through the Veil. And I created this just after the death of my father. Uh, I had brought a large painting into his hospice room and, I was so amazed at how much joy it brought everyone who came into the room. My father, my relatives, the nurses. Uh, and, and when you're faced with losing someone you love and death, uh, you think, why, why do we ever wait? 
why, why do we buy all the art supplies and then keep them on the shelf? So there was this, this energy to the next time I got into the studio to just let it out, whatever it was, and to not be afraid. And so after about three hours of painting, this piece, I kind of stepped back. It's like, wow, I have, something's happened. Um, and I pursued that. I really, uh, as you know, with the titles, my identity melted away and I began, became one with the wind, the grass and the rain. Uh, in the titles, I really try to kind of hint at some of the more, uh, some of the more spiritual or mystical things that I'm, I'm ruminating on. I'm also a poet, so I've been working some poetry into my work as well. These pieces are quite large. I've only recently started to work smaller. As the series progressed, I really got passionate about being brave, about about embracing the fact that I was literally trying in the work to create a portal, a blessing, if you will. Um, just be still, to stop, reflect before starting the painting. And then in offering them to the world, say this, this is a space for you to fall into or a space, this, this piece can emanate energy. So I really uh, believe these, these pieces are portals. They are, they have energy imbued into them. And it's, it's been amazing to be honest about that and share that with people. I have main grown men and women cry on, on a level that's uh, where they're touched. And to me, that, that is everything. That's, I don't necessarily wanna make people cry, but to create something where someone has an aesthetic experience that brings them to tears, um, is powerful. Uh, I started challenging myself to work smaller. So here's an example of a 12 by 12. I'm currently doing some as small as, as uh, four by five. And uh, you'll see that in my Instagram post coming up. This one's titled Emotions, Pigment, Oil, and Water on Canvas. Absolutely love this piece. Uh, when you're in front of it in person, it really has that, that quality of, of what you're looking through. That uh, reminds me of Monet's Water Lilies. This piece is called The Great Divide. The idea of, of the universe coming into being. And that is the same uh, inspiration behind this piece, which you also see behind me. I have two small children, so I uh, decided I really wanted to embrace the rainbow in my work. There are certain subjects as, as artists that if you're trained you go to school, that we learn that they're kind of trivial and to stay away from them. Don't, don't put your composition in the middle. Don't do something trite. But I think as an artist, we can do whatever we want. This piece uh, I created in 2020, it's called A New Hope. This piece is called Serpent Rising Battle of the Mystics. And if you know, you can see the chakras rising up through the center of the painting. I don't really know what's gonna happen when I start painting. It's a very intuitive process. And I, I let the muses guide me and, and my, my knowledge and abilities. Uh, as I get started in a piece, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm reaching for, for what I know is there. Um, and I, when I work in collage, it's very much the same process. It's a, a process of getting lost and then stepping back, and reflecting, and really letting the work guide me. This piece is important to me um, because it is part of the Opening Portal series, but it is kind of a turning point. There are several pieces that I've done over the past couple of years that, that draw inspiration from certain tragic events in the world. Um, we live in a, in a wild world and oftentimes we have our hearts broken. I started this painting on the day of the Uvalde shooting. I did not know about the shooting when I started it. Um, but while I was driving to the studio, for no apparent reason, I, I started to think about the Sandy Hook shooting. And um, 
I started this painting, posted, got home, and my husband told me the tragic news, and I really struggled with that. Why did I think about that? Um, and then going back to owning my intuitive abilities, uh, this piece has been a journey for me. And I decided that this piece was, was meant to be a message of love. And I really wanted to highlight that, that love is forever and that we receive messages from spirit uh, in different ways. So in the painting, uh, there are little references to, to different ways that we might think of a loved one and some written word. Here's a detail of that piece. And one thing I want to share very quickly uh, that I love is uh, that we are we are like radios, and just because you tune into a channel doesn't mean that it's the radio's fault for picking up that channel. So, in thinking about this piece in in conjunction with Ivaldi, um, it's been a journey of of love and healing. I have small children, and uh, no matter what happens in life, I'm always trying to bring the light. I'm always trying to bring hope. So um, one of my new projects is uh, I, okay, so new project that I'm working on and picking in after my birthday this year, the day before my birthday, I had a miscarriage. And it's a very emotional thing. Uh, we, as, as people, as women, we go through difficult things in life. And so with dealing with that loss, um, I've been looking at cyanotypes and the simplicity of the blue and white. I started doing these pieces on paper. I first draw with white uh, oil pastel, and then I lay down ink on top of it. They are currently all blue and white, but I'm starting to transition and do more colors in these pieces. And this, this study, A Crown of Laurels, um, I was, a lot of leaf work in, in my work currently. And I was thinking, why? Why am I using this? Well, leaf, the leaf symbolizes life and growth and the cycles of life. And also, I like the idea of, of a crown of leaves or leaves being protective. Um, and my name, Lauren, means a crown of laurels. Here's a, a semi self portrait. And then this piece, Lost Fetus, which I did right after the miscarriage. And here, uh, almost through with our little presentation, but I just wanted to share with you guys kind of a quick overview of what happens when I'm making these pieces and how satisfying they are. Um, drawing in the white oil pastel and then laying the color on top, the image just emerges and pops out like magic. It reminds me of the process of printing in the dark room. I am so thankful to you all for being here today and listening. Thank you women in their work. Thank you Zolna and Virginia for, for sharing alongside me. And then I just want to invite you guys to keep following me. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Lauren Tarbell Art, Facebook, or my website. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. And now we'll hear Virginia present her work. Hello, Virginia. Hello. <laughs> All right. Uh, so my name is Virginia Jackson Carr. I am a lens-based artist working out of Austin. Um, I am originally from Atlanta, Georgia. I received my MFA in photography from the Savannah College of Art and Design in 2019 and then moved to Austin kind of immediately after that uh, for my husband's job. So it's been, you know, a super exciting recent new adventure here and 
loving the city so far and been so inspired artistically. Um, I'm super excited to share my work with you guys today and grateful and thankful to women in their work for giving me this opportunity uh, today. So how I'm gonna format it, uh, I'm gonna show you guys a few examples of my previous work um, prior to moving to Texas so that you can get a sense of what I was doing before, sense of style, my process. Um, and then I'm going to introduce to you my new project uh, that no one has really seen. Uh, it's very Texas based, so I'm super excited to show it to you guys. It doesn't even have a, the project doesn't really even have a title yet. Um, so like, super open to feedback, comments, concerns, uh, suggestions, anything. Um, so, and another reason why I want you to see this previous work is so that you can see how the new project is very different visually from what I've done in the past. However, it still is under um, the same type of themes that I typically correlate into my work, uh, such as home, place, using the natural world and nature to create metaphor for the complex human experience. Uh, like I said, I'm originally from Georgia, and this is a project from a series um, where I would travel back to certain places that hold a very complex, somewhat messy family history. And I'm using this complex ecosystem to create this metaphor for the complex human experience. These are, this image was created using medium format. Uh, film. I abstract everything in camera um, to play off of that metaphor and using the southern gothic landscape to kind of speak to this certain type of, you know, darkness that we've all experienced. I use a lot of animals in my work as well. Um, that's because, you know, traditionally they've been used uh, culturally, like throughout pretty much every culture as metaphor, symbolism, um, storytelling. I work in an uh, alternative process called lumen printing, which is what this is here. And this photograph was created using a dead bird, that a fallen bird that I found in my neighborhood. So once again, kind of correlating back to that theme of home and home environment. This is a very different landscape. I was taken in New Mexico, uh, but once again, um, I am using abstraction and color to play off of, you know, metaphor and symbolism. I'm using colors uh, from the chakra system in this particular series, which is called Colorscapes, to talk about the importance of nature and its ability to positively affect our mental well being. This photograph is from the same series um, from South Georgia, where I was photographing and using the Southern Gothic dense landscape to create metaphor uh, for my family history and play off of this, you know, dense you know, light through the darkness, light and shadow, um, talking about family history. And because I'm from Georgia, this landscape is extremely, was like super familiar to me, like going back to these places. And that sense of, you know, familiarness translates throughout my work as well, um, as well as, you know, the nature as metaphor. This is another bird lumen print. Um, using color, abstraction, manipulation. Uh, I found this is another fallen bird that I found while walking throughout my neighborhood, falling from its nest. Um, once again, you know, correlating back to that theme of the home environment. This image is from the same Southern Gothic series, abstracting the image in camera. Uh, playing off of family memory, um, 
using me medium format film, uh, using the Southern Gothic landscape to tell a story and play off of my own experience and then the common human experience as well. This photograph is from the Colorscape uh, series, um, which was the mountainscape in New Mexico one I showed previously. It's a mixture uh, of digital, illustration, collage, using animals again here uh, to speak to that metaphor and you know, bring in that concept of symbolism um, yet again in storytelling. This photograph was taken in South Georgia, uh, playing off again landscape as metaphor. You have these cypress trees growing out of the water, creating this complex ecosystem that you really only see in the South. Um, I know there's cypress trees in Texas as well, um, which, is which is super neat to me. Uh, using color, abstraction, creating all of this in camera, uh, yet again, to create these scenes and create metaphor. So now that you have seen some of my previous work, I am going to introduce to you guys, can everyone see that? Very good. Um, I'm going to introduce this new series and this is the series that I started um, during COVID. And once I had moved to Texas, was living in a new city, new neighborhood, new house, just lost my job, nothing was familiar, right? And I was kind of like, where so much of my previous work was about going to these somewhat familiar places and playing off of that. Uh, so I was kind of like, well, what, what do I do? Um, how am I going to be inspired or, you know, continue to make work when I'm feeling so just like mentally and physically like out of place. Um, we were just moved into a new neighborhood in Austin, which is called Holly. And to me, everything was different from the landscaping, the colors, the architecture, uh, was so different culturally from what I'm used to coming from Georgia. Um, so I started the project just by walking around kind of like as an outsider uh, observing this neighborhood that I didn't quite feel a part of at all. Um, looking at details and different elements of what was different or lighting, color. Um, one thing I noticed about the neighborhood was the amount of like feral cats that lived there. And, you know, me, like I've always brought in animals in some way um, to my work. So I found that really interesting. And after doing research, I found that so much of this feral cat problem ties back into gentrification and families that have had to move, leaving pets behind and they're multiplying. Uh, so I was learning a lot about the history of the neighborhood as well. Um, hey, Virginia. Yeah. I just wanted to let note that you're not switched over to your new presentation yet. So oh. we're missing your beautiful. Wow, really? Okay, hold on, let's see. Okay. There you go. Is, can y'all see it now? No, not yet. We're on your your last presentation. PowerPoint. You're great, you're doing, I can't wait to see the images. <laughs> we'll just have to um, change the screen that you're sharing to um, your Lightroom gotcha. okay. instead of the PowerPoint. All right, let me see. Here we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I'll kind of go through these then a little bit faster. <laughs> the first couple of images. Okay, can you all, everyone see that now? The new project? Not really. We see like little thumbnails on the left. That's so weird. Okay, hold on one second. Did that work? Okay. So weird. Here, let me just stop and then start over again. And maybe that will fix it. 
Uh, I can see the image now in the center. Okay, is it good? Uh, it was there and now, hold on. Back to our white. Virginia, does the slideshow option up in the top right? From Lightroom. Let's see. Is it coming up now? <laughs> mm. All right, let me just try something and see. <laughs> Are you able to see the Lightroom catalog now? I can see your thumbnail on the side. That's so weird. Do you see your slideshow option up here on the top right? See if that might, yeah. Library developed map book slideshow. So what can you guys see? <laughs> we can see your, your Lightroom uh, window and we see your thumbnail, but we do not see where your bigger image is supposed to be. It's just a white uh, and it has your file name. So bizarre, okay. Yes. Can you open them from the original folder that you are pulling them from? That's what I'm thinking I'll do. Okay, just one second. Let me, I have an idea. Oh, that works. That works. See we see it. You can yep. see it now? Yeah. Which yeah. is weird because I cannot see it. <laughs> see? Oh, no. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone? Yeah. It's back. It's back. Can you see your <laughs> thumbnail? Here we go. Okay. Okay. I am just going to. No idea what's going on. Technical difficulties are a part of our lives, aren't they? It's so weird oh. because it's perfect on my screen. And I don't. You know what it could be if you go to system preferences and then uh, that's, what is it, wait, displays, sometimes in Mac. I like that. You can make your thumbnails bigger. Try that instead of going full screen. Oh yeah, there you go. Perfect. Okay. It's like as soon as I click it though, to go to the next one, it goes away. Just doesn't make any sense. If you just hit your arrow keys, will it go away? I'm trying. I do have all of these pictures in a Dropbox folder. I'm thinking I should just open it from the Dropbox folder and okay. share it that way. Since I think it's I think it's something with Lightroom. So just one second. Virginia, while you're searching, I just want to say that as I was looking at your first set of work and the beautiful birds that you did, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I'm not the only artist who picks up beautiful dead birds. Really? <laughs> Yeah, always looking at uh, using lots of dead animals. <laughs> when I was little, I used to have a, a bug collection, much to my mother's dismay. Uh, really? <laughs> there were always, you know, like her treasures. Uh, okay, I think this is going to work this time, you guys.
your first set of work is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. I love that you're you're playing with the image and abstracting it and uh, incorporating the illustration and drawing on top of the photograph. So inspiring. Thank you. So can you guys see this? Yes. <laughs> yes. All yes. right. So we're just gonna do it this way. Um, it is what it is. All right. So we're good now, right? Yes, <laughs> yep. Great. Okay, so going back to this new project, um, nothing is familiar, new neighborhood, lockdown, COVID, um, you know, used to be, you know, coming from a place where so much of my work was going back to familiar places. So I started photographing my neighborhood just because that was kind of all I had that was accessible at the time. Um, and I started the project as kind of the stranger outsider looking at this new place. Um, Austin is so different visually, you know, culturally, um, the architecture, the colors, everything's different. Um, and as I continued to work on this project, I became friends with that, you know, was able to meet neighbors, learn about the history of the neighborhood. And over time, I realized that this was home. And just because I wasn't in Georgia anymore, you know, it doesn't mean that I don't have that aspect of family and home to my work because so many of these neighbors, you know, also have become like family to me. Um, so using color, animals again, uh, like I mentioned before, <laughs> learning about the gentrification because of these cats that have been left behind and how that all ties into how the neighborhood is changing. Uh, using small detail, um, you know, stepping back, photographing the river, which I had never grown up near about, you know, never grown up near a body of water before. Um, so now when I look at this project, and work on it, I feel a part of the neighborhood now. I don't feel like that outsider looking in anymore. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with the work yet. Maybe it's a book, um, it's about storytelling. Um, I didn't do a lot of portraiture prior to this project. So that has been something I really loved working on. I love that because I've lived here now for you know over two years, I've gotten to photograph during different times of the year, times of day, uh, become super close with these kids that live on my street. Um, so not only is it a documentary pro pro project about the neighborhood, it's also more about me uh, becoming part of the neighborhood and feeling at home through the work. Photographing during different times of the day, um, different times of year. Another thing, because coming from that neighborhood that's experiencing so much change, a lot of what I photographed a year ago doesn't exist anymore. You know, it's been torn down. Um, so it's also about how, you know, that your neighborhood and the change and how home can feel different. When I first started the project, I didn't have any people to photograph at all because I didn't, you know, know anyone. And as the project has grown, gotten to include portraiture, which I, which I love. And, you know, talking about landscape and my previous work and that familiarity, like agave, this agave plant, you know, is so new to me and so different. And living among that, like, is just like a ties into that symbolism of change and home and how my new environment is different yet. That doesn't mean that it's not home. Mm -hmm. Colors in the neighborhood are so interesting to me. Um, it's just, I don't know, just so much more visually inspiring than I ever thought it could, than I ever, ever expected.
because it's still so in progress, you know, still working out the kinks and editing and figuring out sequencing and all of that. But um, one reason why I really wanted to do this program was to start getting it out there and sharing it with people, especially people in Texas, since so much of what I've done in the past has been in Georgia. Uh, this is a great example. Like this house totally doesn't exist anymore. It's been totally rebuilt and you know, the new house was sold for like $2 million or something, which is crazy. Tying back into the themes of animals and cats and what that means for the neighborhood. And another thing that's really neat because I've gotten so close with these little boys is they've learned about photography like through my project. And I even gave Manny, the guy at the bottom, a Polaroid and a Polaroid camera. And he started photographing and is like super into that. And like we critique his images and it's just been super, it's been such a cool experience. And you're tying back into symbolism, you know, and like black cats and how that's what that's always meant kind of like throughout history and storytelling. And for me, you know, like it's this cat to me represents just like me, like coming into the neighborhood and like feeling at home in Texas and like getting past, you know, the kind of lonely thoughts that I had prior to starting this project. And before this project, I, you know, was using film and traditional and like alternative work. And because of COVID, I, you know, didn't have access to those facilities. And so I kind of forced myself to shoot digitally and um, kind of see differently through that as well. Mm -hmm. And that is everything so far that I've edited down for this project. Um, so excited to show it to you guys. Uh, you know, would love to hear y'all's thoughts on this and glad we got past the technical difficulty <laughs> aspect of it all. And that's it. Mm, great job, Virginia. Thank you. Beautiful work. Thank you so much. I love the idea of, I think that, that this body of work would be really beautiful as a book. Mm -hmm. um, I think so too, just going back to storytelling and like the narrative of it and placement and sequencing. So I have a lot to do, um, but you know, I, I think it's there and you just gotta keep working on it. And one thing that I didn't mention, um, I recently had to move, just moved neighborhoods. So now I'm like, okay, well, how does that affect the project? You know, am I going back there to still photograph? Like, does that make me see the neighborhood differently at all? Like not living there anymore? Does it change anything? Like, how am I going to work through that? Mm -hmm. I find it really interesting the the relationship you built with the two boys that you photographed and how precious that is and then passing the gift of making art and photography onto them. Yeah, that's so cool. really special. It's probably been the highlight of the project is becoming so close with them and teaching them about art and photography as well. So Diane, can we, I know everyone can jump in and make questions, but can we ask each other yeah, something? Yeah, definitely. That's definitely something I want to encourage as Absolutely. well. Um, if you guys have questions for each other, if anybody in the uh, audience has questions, feel free to unmute and ask or put it in the chat and I'll ask for you. 
Um, for now, though, you guys are welcome to talk amongst yourselves and um, ask any questions that you have any curiosities about. Right. So I actually want to make a comment to Virginia about this new project. I think it's beautiful. I think it's um, because I've been moving around basically all my life. I do feel like home is where you live. Of course, there is your family that you leave behind and it's really hard, but just uh, welcoming welcoming this new space and having it yours and uh, becoming it part of your artwork, I think is very important. And I really see a narrative throughout uh, your new work. And it's very interesting to see some of the photos. For instance, there's one where it says, beware of the dog. And then the next photo, it's a cat, cat pa uh, passing by. So this, uh, you know, juxtaposition and these images that talk to each other in a very nice and sometimes funny way I think it's very interesting in that work um, so I think you, you you could go I mean there's many ways to go but a narrative way would be very interesting to see yeah I had a question for you out of yeah. all the materials you know that you've worked with so far like which one do you tend to gravitate toward now like in your current you know where you are now like more organic more industrial or the combination Definitely a combination. So right now I'm the, I am in this concrete phase, mm -hmm. uh, a material that it is very challenging. And at the beginning, I thought, you know, this is a, an industrial and a material that is used for construction, used, used mainly by men mm -hmm. uh, or by men. And so I thought, how can I um, welcome that into my studio practice and how can I make it more uh, contemporary or artistically. And so with that, I'm thinking about combining it or I'm, I am combining it nowadays with natural material, organic material, and much more material that relate to my upbringing. And so that's what I talked about the jute, but uh, I'm, I'm using, I'm planning on using also coffee sacks, um, filters, coffee filters that are being uh, drying out for the last year or so. Um, working with my mother, uh, although she's not an artist, she's a, a, a nurse, but she's very uh, into working with her hands and artistically and craftly. I want to elevate that craft into a new level and also study uh, indigenous work, which is amazing and we're kind of forgetting it. I want to bring it to the present. I want to show the new generations that this cannot be lost and so introduce it to my work to show it as something that is contemporary. I really admire that, Zulma. You were we were speaking yesterday, and and you were talking about um, moving in, it using materials where you felt like you were moving into an area that's kind of a man's world, and and embracing them, uh, getting into the wood shop, working with concrete. Uh, I love your use of recycled materials. I think that that is so. I think it's important as artists to kind of point to problems in the world and to make people think about it and. I absolutely love what you're doing with that. I really enjoy also the aspect that you're inviting people to participate with your sculptures, um, breaking down that, that barrier where we go to a museum or a gallery and we're just meant to look, to really have a hands-on touch. Is, uh, and even just moving around your work is yeah. a beautiful invitation for people to participate. I really enjoyed uh, the iceberg piece with the rope and you said we only see a part of person. Um, I loved that you said something about the, you know, the balance, but then it became about not letting anything fall. Um, and you, you mentioned pain and that pain can be beautiful. And it, it reminded me of, of a Rumi quote that uh, the wound is where the light enters in. And, and yeah, your work, um, both of you, um, so inspired after seeing your presentations and yeah, ready to go make sculpture and, and start <laughs> photographing again. <laughs> Thank you. Coincidentally, it has like an element of just like emotion and like it's, you know pain, like you said, and that human experience like behind um, our work and you know working with a lot of other female artists. I found that women like aren't afraid to get personal you know yeah deep and I really resonate 
with that aspect of both of you guys, both of your work, um, you know, whether that's talking about, you know, you talking about the pain through your sculpture or, you know, the cyanide types about, you know, a miscarriage, which is such a personal painful experience. And, um, you know, and tying that back into like my own experience of not feeling at home and, you know, like how do I get there? And uh, I think it's neat that we just all kind of share, you know, they're very different work. There are some commonalities to it. Yeah, it's personal and emotional, mm -hmm. which is very, I don't know if it's very women based. I don't, I don't think, but it's, it's very interesting the way that Diane uh, and the people in women and their work kind of put us together. I guess there is, of course, a, a work uh, behind it, but it's, even though it's very different, it's very similar. And, and I wanted to ask Lauren, I really enjoyed uh, all of your work. Collage is, I think it's really beautiful. And I see that the paintings as collage as well, because you do, you know, little details of painting that from here, at least I see still collage, even though I know it's painting. And with collage, I'm always wondering, when do you stop? Because there's so many things you can use and there's so many things you can place on, uh, on a canvas or on a surface. So when do you say, okay, this is, you mentioned that you start usually without really knowing where you're going and then it, it, start, it starts coming. How do you stop though? How do you make yourself say, okay, this is it. I'm not going to place anything else. Uh, it's, it's tricky. It's, it's very much um a process i i do i do teach a collage class which i love to do because uh when i teach i, I believe in sharing all the secrets and sometimes when as students of art we take a class and i feel like our professors safeguard their their technical skills um but i love sharing why i do what i do and how i do it i think it's empowering for other people um it's a dance uh, Zulma, it's a dance, and I, I had an amazing teacher growing up. Her name is Nancy Miller. She's an amazing fine artist. So as a freshman in high school, I took a design course, and we cut paper on, on another piece of paper to make a composition. And Nancy Miller, you were brutal uh, back in the day. She would walk around, and you couldn't glue anything down until you got approval. So she would walk around and she would dump your piece if she felt like you weren't progressing with the design. She would just flip it over, you know, kind of a like, I'm going to flip it. But uh, I use that mm -hmm. a lot in my work because we get really attached to how things should be. Um, so I will lay stuff out and start building up layers, glue some stuff down, but not everything. And then I will just dump it continuously. And then kind of pick up the pieces and keep going. Um, nice. Yeah. yeah. Love your work. Thank you. Yours too, ladies. So inspiring. Thanks. Well, I think we're at a good stopping point. Thank you so much for presenting today in Virginia. Thank you for like just dealing with the tech mm -hmm. issue and just rolling with it. <laughs> it's happened to all of us. <laughs> I'm, glad it, I'm glad I had it in that folder to save me. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank you guys for being patient. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you, Diane, for inviting us and getting to meet Lauren and Virginia has been great. Thank you guys yes, so much for organizing and for everything yeah, yeah i just want to mention a couple of things that we have coming up at women in their work um we have a talk about for our current show one bad monkey um, with state Kronbach. that'll be coming up on july 30th at 11 a.m so if you guys wanted to come to that um the registration is up on the website and it'll be free and open to the public um Stave's exhibition as well as Anna Estev Lauren's sculpture in the garden they're both going to come to an end on the fourth so there's a little bit of time to still come and see that um, we'll have Rachel Wilson Smith opening on the 11th. Um, I'm sorry, the 13th. Very excited about that. And um, Red Dot is also coming up soon. We have a couple more weeks for sponsorships if anybody's interested in that. And the tickets will be dropping in August at some point. Um, just keep an eye on the social media for that. Um, but yeah, um, thank you all, everybody, for coming. And thank you to you three for, for giving us some beautiful presentations. And um, we're 
we're very excited about today. Thank you guys. Thank you all. Bye. Yeah. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye.